The other one? Yeah, with the phone. Okay. Let's see how it is when we settle to record. I forgot to shut the door. And do we have sound on the screen? Yes, I do. we do. Yeah? It's you recording. See me? Yeah. Will you see the sound? Yes, I do. Okay, you're already connected. Yeah. Okay, hello, we are back. Hello, and welcome to another vlog. My name is Kwame, and this is... Hi, I'm Elaine. And uh, we're happy to have you here. If this is your first time tuning in, we make vlogs about our relationship as... Uh, Obviously, an interracial couple and... Intercultural couple. Yes. And anything else that we experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun fact, we've just had some bad fufu and it knocked Elaine out. Yeah, so I just woke up from a nap, so I'm very <laughs> mellow. <laughs> yeah, but in today's video, we're going to talk about something that um, comes up mm -hmm. quite often, but we haven't... Uh, made time to talk about here on the channel and it's about you want to tell them Kwame's pressure yeah. yeah I mean I wanted to do an episode on the pressure to provide and I think this pressure uh, especially comes forward with uh, men in the relationship or people who identify as the men like the breadwinner or whatever role uh, gender roles attached to that, so I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, because it comes up when we talk about it, and I think also in Ghana, where the gender roles are very strong, um, I think more people uh, feel the influence of it. So we thought it would be good to talk about talk it. Talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So traditionally, traditionally, I mean, the world is um, changing now, but traditionally. Um, the role of the man has been to provide mm -hmm. but i don't consciously um, ascribe to that uh notion mm -hmm. because yeah but it's still ingrained there somewhere but i i think i know where it comes from okay for me okay so let me ask my first question then so where do you think this pressure to provide comes from um, so it's not necessarily to provide for my family or you per se, but it's more about to, prov to be able to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's to be able to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's much more important to me than anything to be able to afford the basic necessities without having to worry about it. Mm -hmm. As in, I don't have to think uh, about what to eat and how to get the money to eat. Mm -hmm. And now that I have a partner, of course, it's also part of, you know, making sure that we're both comfortable. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily wanting to do it because I'm a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you want to provide a certain comfort. Yes. For yourself and, and the people around me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's not necessarily uh, a man provide for a woman and family thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. Where I believe it comes from is growing up um, with, you know, among certain people or different kinds of people, you have, as they would always say, you know, the fingers are not the same. You have people okay. who have different luxuries than you do. Ah, okay, yeah. So you're exposed to, for example, going to school and seeing, you know, people have certain things that you may not have. And as a child or, yeah, as a teen or whatever it is, it's nice that those people have these new things that you wish you also had for yourself. Mm -hmm. But in a home where maybe your parents... Um, only believe in providing the, the very basic as what they can, mm -hmm. you know, you have clothes. You don't have to have the Nike. Yeah, you didn't miss out on anything, but... Yeah, you have clothes, yeah. you have shoes, you have somewhere to sleep. You were dropped off at school, but you didn't have to have the newest Nike for it to, like, yeah. you know. And growing up with people who would have that and all those things would, you know, also make you feel like, yeah, you also deserve such things because it's nice to see them have it. And for the most part, when I would ask, like, my dad, for example, for those things, for him, he didn't see the need, the oh, need for to them do it. Where you were like, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You have, you have yeah. your sneakers already. So what do you need? 
So this, I think, birthed a certain spirit of wanting to find my way around these things mm -hmm. creatively. So how do I, for example, get my own money to buy these things that I want? Mm -hmm. And besides buying it, also be able to buy it whenever I want, like, you know, to sustain myself, the comfort. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the idea to get yours mm -hmm. is what... The it, mindset was born. Yeah, where it was born. Mm -hmm. So... Can you give an example of the things you came up with? Yeah, so for example, I, I learned, I self-taught myself how to use CorelDRAW at the time to design... I don't know what it is. CorelDRAW is a, it's a, it's a software, a design software. Oh, okay. Yeah, to design t-shirts and we came up, my friends and I came up with uh, uh, a group, no, we, we, we built a t-shirt brand, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we used our names to build a t-shirt brand nice. and we called it Verse 5 and uh, we made and sold t-shirts. That's how we were actually okay. being able to like generate money. That's yeah. one of the ideas. And who was buying your shirts? The school? The people in school? Yeah, people in school. And there was an era where people loved custom tees. Ah, okay, okay. Like to have their names on it or a certain ah, saying or a set, okay. it was, oh, nice. we, we actually milked that era. The only stupid thing we did was we, we, we used to blow the money instead of save it and invest yeah, it. Yeah, okay. But that's fine. And how old were you? I mean... Yeah, we're in our teens. Yeah, right? so yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So that's where it came from. Okay. I've always loved comfort. You know. Okay, and now nowadays, like, how do we experience that pressure to provide comfort? How does it like appear in your life? Oh, so now, I mean, the thing is, psychologically, the better you get at it, mm -hmm. the more you want. Yeah, that for me, that's if I can speak of it. Uh, I feel sometimes it's like, do they call that like a slippery slope? It is a slippery slope. Because the more comfort you get, the more, like there's always another level of comfort, right? Yes. And for me, it's a bit worrisome to sometimes observe that because we often overlook that we are already comfortable. We're already working hard to have a certain level of comfort yeah. and just be grateful for that. Instead of always onto the next thing, uh, I love your entrepreneurial mindset, but it also has a downside that you're not able to ground in where you are now and always onto the next thing. Yeah. Do you recognize that? I do recognize that. I do recognize that. And it's just, it's just um, something that, I mean, has to be mentally worked on. Mm -hmm. the, the insatiable need to, I mean, want the next best thing. And besides having the next best thing, to also think that, no, you can't be complacent when you've had enough. Mm -hmm. You can't relax when you've had like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I have a buffer in my account, it's fine. Yeah, yeah but so you're spending the buffer, so you need to, like, you know... Mm -hmm build on it to the point where like you know you can comfortably travel do these things like mm -hmm. you know without feeling like if you live a little mm -hmm. it will affect your uh, basic. yeah so it's like on the one end it's your entrepreneurial mindset like always wanting to innovate come up with new things and then you're also somebody who really appreciates quality in your life so, I mean, if you also look at our videos, you can see the quality is up to a certain standard. But that's really how Kwame works. Like, if he wants something, he wants to do it well. So yeah. that also translates into, you know, gadgets, uh, other things to get in your life. You, you, you appreciate those things. Yeah. But I also think there is a certain element of fear, no? There is fear. There is fear. But how the does it, like, the, the fear... what's the fear part? Uh, so I've had a morbid fear of, uh, a, a, a terrifying fear, if I should say, of, uh, yeah, not being able to have the basic things. I don't, I don't want to, I, like, so if you've seen people go through, um, mm -hmm. how it, it looks like or feels like, I don't know how it feels like per se, but if you've seen people beg for basic, like, I want food to eat, mm -hmm. I want this, it's, it's sad mm -hmm. right 
and you do not want to get to the point where you are a burden on someone. Mm -hmm. Me mentally, I, I cannot. Um, I hate. You want to be self sufficient? Yes, I, okay. I am not good with asking mm -hmm. people for things mm -hmm. because it's either they will not give you what exactly you want or mm -hmm. at the time you want it. As yeah, well. I understand. And, and you also don't want to think about wait, I want water and common water, I have to ask somebody? It's yes. basic. It's, it's like the, the, the Maslow's hierarchy mm -hmm. of needs. It's just a very basic thing. Your food, your shelter, mm -hmm. and all those things should be and something... And because you've witnessed that's from up close, that's where it come, came from? It's not up close as in I've lived... Not yourself, but... Yeah, but you've you've see it up close. Yes, you see it. And you that's... think to yourself that, whoa, mm -hmm. it must be hard to... You know, yeah, like me, Emu says, Chale, I'm afraid of hunger. It's one of the biggest fears, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that when you decided or that when we talked about you wanting to quit city, that was also one of the main things you were worried about. Remember? Yeah, that you will not be able to make enough to live. Yes. But if you're not able to rely on other people, how do you see that you like are now with me? And I would not let you go hungry, right? As long yeah. as I can, yes. I will... There, there is, yes, there is so that. So how does that work so for you? So th there is that. Um, that makes me relax a bit more than if I were on my own. Okay. So I bring small comfort. Small? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That makes me relax a bit more than if I were on my own, honestly. Mm -hmm. So that is one truth. But also in my mind, yes, my wife is there to support me if there's any issue. Yeah. But it's not, my wife is going to take care of me, so I'm chilling. No, it's not like a free ticket or something. At no, all. I know. So it cannot sit in my mind that if for, if for nothing at all, I have to be an equal partner or equitable partner. Yeah. Bring my equitable yeah. best to the platform or the relationship. Yeah. So but I think you you are doing that and you have always been doing that. Yeah, but... In your mind, you still feel the pressure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just okay. like... Tick, 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 tick. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So how much do you think of that pressure comes from the gender role? Because traditionally, luckily, we're finding more hybrid forms of partnerships yeah. in many shapes and sizes. But traditionally, for, for example, my grandparents, the man was the breadwinner. When a woman would marry, I, I am they would very, be out. I am not very traditional in that sense. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I am with somebody like you, a partner who understands um, this uh, collaboration that mm -hmm. we have yeah. to provide for ourselves and our family. So yes, I want to provide my bit and exceed if I can. But, but how? How? My, but how? it's not. It's not necessarily. Uh, a gender thing. I don't see myself as a breadwinner or as head of the home and I don't have that pressure to provide as a man necessarily. Mm. It's more as a partner. Yeah. That it has to make sense that the burden doesn't shift mm -hmm. to one person. No. Okay. So for me, I don't I, I if and I love to take care of the people around me when like so it's nice to be able to take care of the people around you when you want to without you know yeah. it being a so it's not necessarily because i'm a man i want to do this no mm -hmm. but it's more like yeah it would be nice to just up and go somewhere with your family without worrying yeah yeah not because you're a man who wants to take his family out but because okay. you are a person who wants to hang out with those people without having to worry about work all the time yeah so you feel it's more character based then yeah for me okay yeah. Then I have a trick question for you. Okay. How does the pressure to provide connect to your pressure to protect? Because that's one of the things that's very... Oh, pressure to protect is, is, is something that I don't have to pay for. So it's, it's something I can't turn off. But I feel that's very gender... You think it's gender based? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I, I would, uh, I would actually, so maybe I would actually can, agree mm -hmm. with that. So, for example, Kwame really likes to drop me to places and like he wants to make sure i'm safe i've branded it in acts of service 
Yes, I know you've branded it, but <laughs> I do think so. The pressure to provide is also, if we say pr pressure to provide, is the pressure to provide comfort. And for you, comfort and safety are very linked. Correct? Yes. So there, the gender role does come in. Because you feel like, maybe also because I'm not from Ghana, so that gives an extra dimension to it. Yeah, but besides that, yes, it gives that extra dimension. But um, in my relations with most people around me, especially my... Uh, yeah, so where the gender Female thing is. Female friends. Yeah, especially then where you the gender. Want to protect them, yeah, right? where the gender thing comes in, especially yeah, with uh, I, I am like, bro, don't even come close to us. Yeah, like he's very. If somebody would come to me, and Kwame thinks it's not like right or anything, he will come and like make himself big and this is <laughs> his low voice, and then he will literally scare them away. I'm not kidding. Or. I remember one time there was the, we were at the place in Accra. It was night, like where we're going out, we're getting drinks somewhere, and then a guy, I think he grabbed my ass or something, and you were around, but you didn't see it. And then I was a bit like startled, and then I told you later, and then you're like, no, where, where is he? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> and then like, no, no, it's fine. Like, I just wanted to share. So I think that one is very. So Gender it is based. a bit linked, right? Yes. To provide to safety, com comfort, comfort safety yeah yeah so there you have to give that some credit the gender role yeah. a bit okay um well we already talked about um, how it appears in a relationship i think it's pretty clear but how can i provide some comfort or ease by i cannot lift that pressure for you because i think i i have to i have to mentally um work on that mm -hmm. first yeah i think i have to mentally work on that first before i can let somebody you know take over or take a certain part of it off my shoulder but what do you think can will help you in that journey like what do you have any clue at the moment no <laughs> yeah i don't think i have a workable clue as to how it should go at the moment in my head is just like yeah make more money yeah that's what's in my head like make more money make so more you, money coming so from your entrepreneurial mindset yes your you know, fear of hunger yeah but as for the fear of hunger at this point it's not there like that anymore yeah but right now it's more of the, the love of comfort yeah and, and peace of mind yeah like fuel food electricity mm -hmm. internet mm -hmm. the average thing i don't want to think about it yeah so it makes me want to be on my because we at a certain point you would need to work on it because if it's like a a never-ending like urge then you will never fully be content and and you, you will always be longing you, for more and you not you and you may not have the room to live yeah because i think maybe outside of all the elements we already talked about we live in a very capitalistic world so the yeah. longing for more even though we might not uh, necessarily uh, consciously make that uh, effort you will still absorb that mindset yeah. right yeah. because productivity is always rewarded yeah. So longing for more, whether it's more money, more time, more travel, it's it's almost ingrained in this world because we're like the more it's the same with YouTube. The more you upload, the more rewards you get. Yeah. So the longing for more is always there. It has to be worked up here first. Yeah, you kind of have to untangle that a bit, unpack it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not all negative. I think it also makes you driven. But I think it's good to keep an eye on what it does to you and also how it affects us. Because for me, I can, I can tell him that we are comfortable. We are okay. Look around us. We are good. But I can say that a hundred times. But if you don't believe that. Oh, I believe it. 
but it's still wanna, long I, for more. Yes, I just don't want to slip. Yeah. I don't want to be caught slipping. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, that's all. I believe it, yes. Yeah, but y you understand that that always brings a certain tension. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So. What time? Yeah. Yeah. I'll unpack it some more. I would be very curious to hear or in the comments read uh, if you recognize anything out of our conversation. In your relationship or you as a person. Yeah. With your relationship with others as well. And whether you are a woman or a man or whether you recognize it from your family history or you recognize it from your current relationship or from your friends. We are very curious to hear yeah, if you're also experiencing this or yeah, observe it in your environment and how does it affect you. Yeah. So very serious topic, but we think it's also important to sometimes unpack things that are not easy. Yeah. And as you can see, we also don't have the solution. <laughs> yeah, not yet. It's a process and yeah. it's good to be aware of things and share things and we'll figure it out one day at a time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime. Oh, like, like, subscribe and comment on our channel. Yeah, and we'll catch you in the next video. Yes. Cheers. Bye. Dag okay. lieve mensen. Ja. Yeah. <laughs>